All right. Uh, as Nancy said, my name is Cody Ellens, and uh, I think this presentation will take on a similar flavor as to Paul's last one as we're presenting from a business perspective rather than that of an engineer or uh, a chemist or someone who's interested in the particular properties of biochar. Uh, so this presentation will be entitled Biomass to Biochar and Fast Pyrolysis Oil Fractions. Avello is a startup company, uh, a spin out of Iowa State, and we were trying to commercialize some technology that we developed there uh, as we were graduates, recent graduate students, and we're commercializing that technology to provide asphalt, fuels, chemicals, and uh, soil amendment products through fast pyrolysis. Uh, one thing I would like to mention right off the bat is that Avello Bioenergy, Avello's name actually is kind of important to the process that we've, we're trying to com commercialize from the university. Velo in Latin actually means to separate. And so I think that will make more sense as we move further along in this presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're a spin out. Uh, we were formed by three graduate students, former graduate students, including myself, as well as Dr. Robert Brown from Iowa State University in 2009. Uh, we have an experienced team of managers, and we have seed funding from a venture capitalist group in Des Moines. And we've licensed two technologies from the university, Iowa State University, one of which is uh, fast pyrolysis soil fractionation technology, and the second is bioasphalt technology. So some of the challenges that have brought us here today and have made uh, bioenergy in particular more economically feasible include the fact that we have rising energy prices, commodity shortages, a growing US energy demand, uh, concerns about energy security, greenhouse gas emissions, climate change, and declining rural development. <clears throat> Looking more closely at some of these, uh, the energy prices and commodity shortages, I'd like to point out that not only are fuels, transportation fuels, uh, related strictly to crude oil, but pretty well everything else. Uh, as I was talking with someone at lunch today, they mentioned that 90% of what we touch and use each day is derived from petroleum. And so this is important for our company because uh, we provide an asphalt, a, a bioasphalt product. And as you can see, petroleum-based asphalt binders, that price uh, pretty well mimics crude oil prices. And that's the blue one in, on the graph, whereas the crude oil price is in the black. And over the, this time frame that I'm showing from 2000 to 2010, you can see kind of the average of the red line is starting to go down. And the reason is petroleum refiners are actually converting a lot more of the barrel of oil into transportation fuels rather than asphalts. And so there's a simultaneous shortage and increase in price. One solution to some of these challenges that we've been talking about is fast pyrolysis. Uh, as others have mentioned, fast pyrolysis uses, can use a non-food biomass, processing it in the absence of uh, oxygen using a high temperature conversion method. Typically for our system, we like to run the reactor, uh, or like to input the biomass with less than 10% moisture and smaller than a quarter inch diameter. So there's a little bit of minimal pretreatment, as I point out on the, on the right there. Fast paralysis is really, typically around 500 Celsius or 930 Fahrenheit. And at those temperatures, those particles, when you enter them into the hot reactor, provide or produce three different products. The bio oil or fast pyrolysis oil uh, optimized around 60 to 75%, biochar between 15 and 25, and the non-cancellable gases making up the balance. Those non-cancellable gases on a commercial scale would probably be, be recirculated and combusted to heat the reactor itself. I don't think that it would be self-sustaining at if you use all those gases to heat the process. You would probably either add natural gas or propane or you might uh, use some of the biochar that you produce to heat the process also. And on the right, you can see some of those benefits uh, using homegrown energy, non-food biomass. The fact that we yield a high amount of liquid is advantageous since a lot of the existing infrastructure in our nation is uh, liquid-based. So uh, the solids, a solid-based material or product is somewhat cumbersome. Even, and as many of these uh, companies will tell you, uh, processing the biomass itself is usually the greatest challenge, uh, the low bulk density. 
conventional bio oil has been used in a number of applications. Uh, you've seen it, you can see it used in combustion and boilers, internal combustion engines, and even gas turbines if it's really clean. All these for generating heat and power. Uh, also some specialty applications including food flavoring, preservatives or resins. Uh, however, this bio oil does have some, of its pro some problems which limit it in more widespread application. These include high water, oxygen, and acidic content, which lead to a lower heating value and corrosion of uh, existing infrastructure. Uh, the, ox the fact that it contains oxygen leads to instability and immiscibility with hydrocarbons. And the solids content can lead to fouling or uh, deposits on, on burners. And additionally, the fact that it's difficult to upgrade into transportation fuels increases that price. So a Velo solution to all this is to combine fast pyrolysis with fractionation technology, hence our name. We can separate out the water and acid that's typically found in conventional bio oil, and this leads to an improved stability. It improves the stability of the bio oil and it increases the heating value. Additionally, the same technology uh, creates a bio oil of some unique properties for novel applications, including bioasphalt, and I'll get into that a little later. This, we use the same process, it's just our uh, collection technology for collecting the vapors that are generated in the process. That's what, uh, that's what our IP is, essentially. So we have a suite of products that we're marketing, bioasphalt, biofuel, and biochar. Uh, bioasphalt is, uh, is the one that I've been kind of focusing on based on the shortage and increased price. Uh, in the lab, it's performed as well, and uh, even sometimes better than petroleum-derived asphalts. And so it, it can be used as a direct replacement for, for such products. Uh, in addition to that, the processing temperatures uh, can be lowered with bioasphalt, and that reduces the cost for processing on a commercial scale uh, when, when you're paving or you're making uh, shingles or something like that. Biofuel oil is like uh, conventional bio oil, except that it has improved properties, similar applications, uh, the heat and power generation, except that it's not going to cause problems with your existing infrastructure. It's not going to have that corrosiveness. Uh, biochar, as we've been talking about today, can be used as a soil amendment, carbon sequestration agent. Its pore structure helps to retain the water and nutrients that, uh, that are in the soils, and the fact that you're adding organic carbon back to the soil can lead to increased soil fertility. So our, our technology allows us to separate these bio oils into different fractions, and that gives us the flexibility to create multiple products, whereas conventional bio oil can be used for a few specialty applications or just for heat and power generation. What we plan to do is build regionally sized facilities on the order of 250 to 500 tons per day, processing that much biomass in one day, and that will allow us to reduce transportation costs of biomass, having those uh, relatively small scale facilities. Additionally, we have the ability to be product flexible. As you can see, we can produce bioasphalt, market it to an asphalt contractor or a shingle manufacturer for either asphalt paving or roofing conditions or applications, or we can make a biofuel oil marketing to a power plant, a fuel oil blender, make heat and power generation, and even uh, use it as a heavy fuel oil. Uh, in either of these cases, we'd be producing a biochar, which we might market to a co-op or, uh, or some other niche application for soil amendment carbon sequestration agent, as well as a renewable fuel source. We also can make a, a chemical feedstocks for advanced biofuels and other specialty applications in uh, including resins, adhesives, and, and flavors. So the status of this technology is that we, uh, when we were graduate students, one of my co-founders, he designed and built a six kilogram an hour reactor system at Iowa State. Uh, it's a six inch fluidized bed. It's equipped with this technology that we've licensed. Uh, we've been able to operate this technology continuously for a number of five 24 hour per day campaigns. In those campaigns, we've been using red oak biomass as our uh, feedstock due to its low ash content. 
and we've been able to produce over 100 gallons of bio oil and 125 kilograms of biochar. Because we've been able to produce all these products, we'd like to start doing product development. And uh, we're, in fact, able to do some small-scale product demonstration. For bioacetal, this has uh, allowed us, uh, which meets or exceeds those standards that I was mentioning. We're planning on paving, or we're scheduled, actually, to pave a bike path or a portion of one in Des Moines this coming September, or I guess it's September right now, this month. So uh, that's coming up here. And as well, the biofuel oil we plan to uh, combustion in, uh, for for com combustion in boilers. Excuse me. Uh, as we've been talking about this morning, biochar, uh, depending on your process, as Paul said, it, it doesn't come out of his reactor. Um, it won't spontaneously come out of his reactor combusting. But for fast pyrolysis, I don't know if it's the temperature difference or what it may be, but it's hot and highly reactive. Uh, exposure to air may lead it may lead to spontaneous combustion, and for this reason, we are investigating methods to safely store, process, and handle and formulate biochars to provide a safe product to our customers. And as Paul also said, we don't want the mailman to we don't want this to blow up in the mailman's face. So uh, it's bad business. Um, we've also been looking at. It's used not only as a soil amendment and carbon sequestration agent, but as a renewable fuel for co-firing with coal power plants. Our pro forma economics for commercial scale plants are, are robust. They, uh, they allow us to make a profit, but they do require that pyrolysis. You can't just sell biochar by itself. You have to have the value of the pyrolysis oil or the fractions to make the economics work. And unless the economics work, you can't make a business. And so that's been really important. We have to have both of them to, uh, to make the company go forward. And in so doing uh, those economics, uh, we've, been, we've had the challenge of placing a price on biochar. And really what we've been doing is we've set a range of prices and done sort of a sensitivity analysis to see how do the economics look at this price per ton or how do they look at this price per ton. If we look at it on an energy basis, and you assume about 25 megajoules per kilogram, uh, the higher heating value of biochar, and you know that coal is priced at around $1. ninety-five per million BTUs, this roughly equates to $42 a ton. Uh, this, as you can see, does not take into account the agronomic or carbon sequestration benefits, which may or may not add value. Um, and like I said earlier, we're, we have a range of values that we've done for economics to see uh, what works and what, what doesn't. Our business plan is to scale up the technology uh, to two and a half tons per day in a demonstration plant. We're currently raising funds for this right now. And we'll plan on building our first uh, our, our demonstration plant next beginning next year. We've aligned ourselves with some strategic investors, including those in the asphalt and fuel oil industries. Uh, we also are, are working with industrial power generators power generators and feedstock suppliers for uh, these commercial scale plants. Our business model is to build, own, and operate these plants. We'll set them up around, around uh, the Midwest uh, to process feedstock. And uh, in so doing, we'll, we'll have these contracts in place to process the biomass and provide those products I was talking about. And we are open to st strategic licensing of our technology and joint ventures. In conclusion, then, uh, there is no silver bullet, as a few others have mentioned. Fast pyrolysis may be one solution to some of the challenges. We use a homegrown feedstock. Uh, it's non-food based. We provide a renewable uh, source of heat, power, and fuels. And we have the potential for carbon sequestration with the biochar. Simultaneously, if regionally uh, and rurally placed locations of these plants can spur economic development in those regions. Uh, our technology opens new markets for us, the bioasphalt in particular, uh, and biochar and bio oil both are needed to make the economics work for these plants. With that, I'd like to thank you and open it up to any questions.
Yes. You mentioned uh, shingles uh, yep. briefly. Uh, I think that's an excellent uh, opportunity for your product because there are a lot of companies. I used to work for a company that's very interested in renewable sustainability, mm -hmm. getting away from from petroleum sure. uh, based products. They can run all the proving grounds for the whole entire industry. And that's not. So I, I would think that would be a very good niche. Sure. For the whole volume is yeah, and as I've mentioned, we're aligning ourselves with some strategic partners, and we have uh, some companies that are quite interested in that that same application. Uh, so that's thank you for that. Uh, a lot of companies out there that are doing bioenergy, especially fast pyrolysis, more on the fuel base route as opposed to the biochar base, uh, they're looking to produce transportation fuels. Uh, that's certainly a well um, occupied environment. Our company is going down a little bit different path. We want to produce biomaterials. We can also produce biofuels, but uh, with all the regulation, it, it seems a lot easier to get into the biomaterials first. Go ahead. Okay, uh, compared to normal asphalt, is there any like a major uh, disadvantage for your um, bell asphalt? Is there a decent or disadvantage? Like, yeah, in case of like, how long the Oh, um, well, as I mentioned, in the lab, it's performed as well and better than petroleum-derived binders. What this uh, bike path will do will allow us to test it on a real-world demonstration, and, and, and you can actually check over time how it will uh, age or how it will crack, uh, those different methods. But as far as we can tell, there are no disadvantages to it.